I don't know how much battery to get. Wow, I didn't know that was such a difference with yeah. that. So another reason to go from the lead acid to... Well, your inverter is going to run longer because the voltage is staying, you know, constant. Oh, you know, yeah. lithium's great, but it's not necessity for everybody. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.live. Harrison from Enduro Power Batteries is back today. Great hey. to see you yeah, again. Thanks you, for always. joining yeah. us. We get a lot of questions about RV lithium, and yeah. you're the expert. Sure. And uh, we were talking on the phone about, you know, there's three best practices when it comes to uh, when someone just bought a fifth wheel or they're considering an RV lithium battery upgrade. What do they need to look at? Yeah, definitely. So we kind of walk you through, there's, there are three best practices. And one is, what is the right battery bank size for you? Uh, two is your converter, which is your onboard charger. Is it lithium compatible? And then number three is adding in a battery monitor with a shunt um, that is not required, but is highly recommended, and we'll go through that. So uh, one, just on the sizing your battery bank, it's a, we could talk for hours on how to size a battery bank, because right. everybody's need is different. There's not a one-stop shop for everybody. The only thing I will say is if somebody just wants to run a basic residential fridge or a 12-volt fridge and get through from point A to point B, look at 12-volt, 200 amp hours of lithium, whether it's a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or any other RV, that would be the basic point. After that, it all depends on what are your consumption rates. Are you a boondocker? Are you trying to stay off grid for one night, two weeks? Are you doing solar? All these other uh, thing, variables that come into play. But um, we can help you kind of get you guided in the right direction as far as what is the proper battery bank size for you. Um, the number two thing, again, is your onboard converter, which is your charger that's on board. Is it lithium compatible? What I will tell you is if you have a, 22, a 2022 or newer, uh, most likely your converter is lithium compatible. Some of the manufacturers now have an auto detect version and another manufacturer has a lithium version on board and we can help you identify those. If it's 21 or older, um, we'll grab the model number off your converter and identify what it is and usually it's going to be a swap out. Any of you, any of you out there with light electrical experience, that's a very simple swap out. Um, and then the third best practice is adding in a battery monitor with a shunt. And the reason for that is in lithium batteries, the voltage profile one starts at a higher voltage than AGM and lead acid. So we're at 12.8 down here and we're at 13.6 for uh, lithium. So it just sits at a higher voltage. Then lithium sits above this 12.8 for almost all of its discharge life and then it drops off. Wow, I didn't know that was such a difference with yeah. that. So another reason to go from the lead acid to well, lithium. Yeah, and so you also it sits higher, so your electronics run more efficiently, especially if you have an inverter inside your um, rig. A lot of guys with fifth wheels um, have an inverter to run their residence or fish, other things. Your inverter is going to run longer because the voltage is staying you know, constant. Okay. Lead acid and AGM, it's declining over time, so as the voltage eventually gets to the point, it'll cut off. So, okay. So... Uh, back to the battery monitor. The battery monitor is going to allow us to look at one voltage, two, it knows the size of the battery bank we have, and three, it's taking track of the plus and minuses out of the battery bank. How much load you're drawing out of the battery and how much energy you're putting back in from your charge sources, whether it's from your shore power, if you happen to have solar charge. It's keeping track of those plus and minuses, and then it spits out a nice, easy to read percentage. So, and those are not really expensive, right? No, nope. they, they range anywhere from, you know, in the $70 range up to about $200 for the, the most advanced model. Okay. Um, the, you know, the main model gives you a lot of creature comforts, an app on your phone. You can sit on the couch, look at your, you know, state of your battery okay. so you can't fire. But yeah, very inexpensive uh, relatively to the cost of the battery bank. And I can tell you that although it's not required, it is highly recommended to have a battery monitor with a shunt when you go to lithium. Not only is it going to give you a percentage that's easy to look at, anybody that's using your RV can be like, oh, 62%, it's 50%, it's not 100%. It's right. easy to use. Yeah, we don't even have that right now. That's one yeah. of the things that we're working on today. Uh, we are getting a 
big, big uh, lithium battery upgrade today. That's going to be another video, so watch for that video. If you're not subscribed, make sure you scan this QR code with your smartphone to get subscribed, or there'll be a link down in the description and the pinned comment. Yep. Uh, one other thing, and I guess a big tip I tell anybody that's looking at converting to lithium, you're like, I don't know how much battery to get. We're talking about battery monitors. Um, go ahead and invest in a battery monitor with a shunt because you can put it onto your lead acid AGM battery system today. Okay. Um, and what's really great about that is there's a line in there that says current. And it's going to, when you look at the current, it's usually like negative. When, you're, when you turn on lights, you turn on appliances, that'll go further negative. And it's telling you how much energy that device is consuming. So you can literally walk around your RV, turn things on, and see the change in the current draw. And you can basically build your consumption profile and kind of figure out what are you using and you know some people call that an energy audit things like that um, it really helps you understand your exact RV and the consumption of it to then ultimately turn around and say okay well I need this size battery bank for to get get through the scenarios I want to get to that way you can smartly move into your you know battery bank investment right and like what you're saying uh, with like a lead acid or AGM battery you can tell right when you're at that 50% mark when you should like make sure it gets charged, right? Correct, yeah, if you set up the, the battery monitor properly, you can put a thing called the discharge floor. You can basically say only use 50% of the capacity of the battery because we don't want to use more than that on AGM or lead acid or we'll begin to damage that. So you can use that to properly manage your lead acid and AGM battery too. And also, that's a great tip. Um, this is not all just about upgrading to lithium. Love to sell you lithium batteries. We are here to educate you. What I can tell you is there are many people out there that can run a lead acid or an AGM battery very well if you can properly maintain it. Um, a battery monitor with a shunt will also give you that ability to accurately um, watch the st state of charge and not discharge it too far so you can basically extend the life of the battery that before, if you had no clue where you're at, you're going to damage the battery. So sometimes, you know, lithium's great, but it's not necessity for everybody. Yeah, like we're in a Thousand Trails Encore RV park now. If this is the only kind of camping you're doing, yeah. uh, and you're not going to be doing any overnights uh, or long drives, you, you might be fine without it, Exactly, right? exactly. I kind of joke that sometimes you don't really even need a battery. You just plug your short power, your converter's plenty of power. You do still need a battery, but yes, if this is style of camping you do, um, if you can maintain your lead acid AGM battery properly, those will just work just just fine for you. So, well, one of the reasons we love working with you and uh, happy to be getting our own uh, Enduro Power Battery upgrade today yeah. is that uh, you're very hands-on. Uh, your entire team is, and I think that's the difference. With I mean, there's what all kinds of lithium batteries out there. You sure. can buy them on Amazon. Uh, some more, some less than your price exactly. point. But uh, customer service is a big deal when it comes to this kind of an install, right? Yep, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, we're very hands-on. We're, we're all about educating our customers, making sure you get the right product. A lot of times, sometimes, that means that our product is not the right fit for you, depending on the application, and we'll, we'll tell you that. Um, at the end of the day, this is a big investment for you. Um, we take the time up front to make sure, you know, and also if we, we go into a relationship, we're partners for, you know, however the ownership of that battery, and that could be up to 10 years. So uh, we want to make sure you got the right solution up front. So, you know, doing that extra touch to make sure um, from a customer service standpoint, we understand what your needs are is very important to us. Um, and that's kind of where you're talking about there's a lot of, you know, a lot of competition in the market. It's just like any category in the in right. there. You're buying Kleenex, which is, a, you know, actually a brand, but, you know, right. tissue paper. There's lots of different brands out there and price points, you know, based on your needs. Um, so in the, in the lithium space, we're what we call, Endura Power is what we call the, um, the value premium. So the premium performance is spec that you expect of the battery. You take our spec sheet, put it down on any of our named competitors, we're going to meet, and in a few cases exceed some of those specs, but you're going to get the performance of what we market out of our battery. It's going to 
going to be delivered to you. From a value standpoint, uh, notably our price point is attractive. It's kind of the sweet spot. You know, it's right in the middle. You know, it's a little, little down from a few and up from some others. But overall, the, the overall value of ownership of the product, I think, is what we deliver. Um, the last two things on that value statement is our Baja series is a 25% smaller case size. So you can get a smaller battery into a tighter spot or get more batteries in a bigger battery bank in an area by having the smaller batteries. And thanks to Harrison, Enduro Power Batteries is giving all of you guys 5% off your RV lithium batteries. So if you've been dreaming of a lithium battery upgrade or you've got to upgrade them just to even get out this camping season, make sure you scan this QR code right over here or there will be a link in the description and the pinned comment. Let's get back into the video. So Harrison, just to review uh, for, again, all of the RVers out there, what are those three considerations? Yeah, there's three best practices. Or one, determine your battery bank size. Uh, again, if you just have a travel trailer, the fifth wheel, 200 amp hours is probably a good spot for you. From there, it all depends on so many uh, variables. We can help you walk you through that. Second one is the uh, converter, your onboard charger, making sure that's lithium compatible. 22 and newer, likely have already got it. 21 and older, give us a call, we'll help you out. And the third one is adding in that battery monitor with a shunt to accurately monitor the state of charge of your battery. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks so much yeah, for coming out here definitely. today. And again, we've got a big install going on today. So subscribe so you catch that video. And actually, we'll link over here to our other RV lithium videos right now. So check them out.